Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, today we're going to start working on the 80 column chip, writing routines to deal with it. Um, I did make a mistake in the last video that I should correct. Um, I kept saying that a couple of registers were 12 and 13, the registers to keep track of where you are in, uh, in the video RAM. Um, it's actually 18 and 19. I was, kind of, I was mixing up hex and uh, decimal there. And uh, we've got a list. I think this is, yeah, this is from Computes Mapping the 128. They put them all on one, they put all the registers on one page here, which is handy. So we'll keep this to refer to as we go along. So, first thing we need to do, um, based on the last video I did where I drew this out on the whiteboard, is write a couple of little routines to read and write those registers. Um, so let's read. Let's let's read an 80-column register, and we do that. Um, all our routines are going to, or at least at least these routines anyway, are going to um, by convention. They're going to put the register number in X, and then the number um, that you get from the register or writing to the register is going to be in the accumulator. So we're going to do it that way. So. Um, Let's see, let's, I don't know if this really needs a zone, but let's give it one. Um, we'll just call these the 80 column base routines. And that'll just separate them off for everything else. Once you've used these a while, you don't really need, you know, these are going to be at the bottom and we're going to build other routines on top of them so we won't need to use these directly very often once we actually get up to writing something useful with them but we'll put a little documentation here anyway all right so to do it um, if you didn't see the last you know, I, I won't explain the whole process in detail again so if you didn't see the last uh, video on this you might want to go check it out but basically you store the value you store the register number into D600 you then do a bit on D600 and you're watching for it to set the minus bit you're watching for it to set bit 7 in that register and so you you branch if plus back up to here which will be here and then you load A when it's ready. It, it tells you when it's ready by setting that bit, and so you load A from D600, and then you're done. So writing is very similar. So similar that we'll just copy most of it. Okay, write. In this case, you do the same thing, except that then you store A. So you have to call this with whatever value you want to write should then be in, should already be in A. All right, that's how we do that. Um, let me check and make sure I have my zone thing correct. Um, let's see, what was the last thing I worked on? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, it needs a needs a bang in front of it. That's what I'm missing. I knew something didn't look right. Okay. So those are the routines that ever all our other routines will call to write and, and read from the registers because that's how you have to program the thing is by going through the registers and you do that by going through those two locations. So let's see. One of the first things we want to do is set up the screen. Oh, by the way, that's I have the 80 column screen in vice up here in the in the upper right that's why it looks quite a bit different from the 40 column screen that I've had up there in the other the other videos the first thing we probably want to do is do some initialization um, and we don't we won't put a whole lot in here right now um, let's wrap let's wrap everything in here in a zone we probably just need one Let's just name it after the file. All right, 
right, so init80 will put things in here as we think of them. But one of the things I want to do, or in fact, let's call it init80 text. We'll have an init80 text and an init80 graphics, because you can do graphics on this chip. I don't know if we'll get to that today, um, but we will at some point. But to do an it80 text, basically we want to we want to put it in text mode, which it is by default anyway. But you know we might be calling this from some game or program that it won't be, and so we want to be able to do that. So that is in register, and I might need to switch to the other book that has. I want to keep. I want to stay on this page. Um, don't remember for sure which byte ha which register keeps track of that so let's switch over here this is the internals book this will have this has a breakdown of them all uh, yeah right here register 25 so bit 7 of register 25 is the bit that keeps track of that and then the other bits do other things so we don't want to mess with the other bits we just want to get the value out of it set or clear bit 7 and then store it back so to do that we want to load x with 25 and um, you know I'm going to I'm probably going to confuse myself here again with hex and, and decimal um, but 20 because, because this assembler assumes decimal unless you uh, specify hex and the monitor assumes hex unless you specify decimal so it's easy to get mixed up um, but 25 would be 19 um, in hexadecimal I suppose we'll just say 25 because that's kind of what you get used to all the books talk about them with the decimal numbers mostly so we want to read that now it's in A the, the value of that register is in A and so then we can and that with Let's see, it's going to be 7f. That's going to clear the top bit. And then we can store it back. Okay. So that puts it in text mode. Um, and if you clear, if you set that bit, that puts it in graphics mode. So um, let's go ahead and have another routine. graphics and in this case we'll or it with 80 which will set that bit and write it back so these both need returns at the end and so now those are both ready but now you know, we'll, we'll add other things to these as we think of one thing I want to add is everything is configurable on this chip more so than more so than the Vic really um, if you look at the registers here um, for instance, you can change where screen memory is. Well, you can do that with the VIC-2. That's not one of the ways it's more, more configurable. But you can move screen memory around. And by default, it starts at 0. It starts at 0 in this, in this chip 16K of RAM that it has to itself. But that can be changed, and so we don't necessarily want to assume that's where it is as we start writing our routines. So I think what we want to do is when we init the chip, we want to query it and ask, okay, where is your screen memory starting? And then we can use that in our calculations later on. I don't want to have to query it every time we print something because that would be a waste. Um, so that's what we'll do. We'll query that. It's That's 12 and 13, um, or C and D and hexadecimal. So let's go down to the bottom here and put a couple of bytes. Um, Let's see, we'll call these screen RAM, let's see, I guess I just put a name, byte 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so that's just setting up a couple of bytes where we can store what we're going to get out of registers 12 and 13. So let's load X with 12. Um, read it, store that into screen RAM. I'm going to store that into the high, that's the high byte. Uh, 
the 80 column chip puts the high byte first in all these pairs of registers that have addresses. I'm going to flip it around just because um, that's what we're used to on the Commodore with other stuff. Now we're going to read from register 13, which is the low byte, and store that into screen RAM. Okay. Um, let's see, maybe I should. Actually, instead of screen RAM, let's say, let's keep things consistent. VDC 80 RAM. I don't want that to conflict with something else we write later on that uses the VIC. All right. That way we'll have VDC 80 RAM. We'll know where we're starting with our, you know, where screen RAM starts so that when we write something to the screen, we can you know, be in the right place because it can be moved around. All right, so that's probably enough initialization for now. Um, we'll, we'll stick some other stuff in there as we come to it. So we're going to need a routine to move. The, there's always a pointer into memory, and that's in 18 and 19 right here, current memory address. Wherever that's currently pointing is where the next thing you you write to the screen goes and you write to the screen by putting stuff into 31 but you can't just start putting in the 31 until you tell it where you want that to be or otherwise you know we, we don't know where it might be at any given time so we use 18 and 19 to set the memory address um, all right so set let's see what do we want to call this set RAM pointer so good enough for now, I guess. I'll think of something else probably. So we want to set. Um, okay, well this. Okay, so now we have to think about what are we going to be passing to this. Um, we're going to be passing an address, so we need to pass it in two registers because that's two bytes. Um, doesn't really matter which ones. Um, we should probably just pick a convention and stick with it. Um, since we're using X as our register number, let's pass it in A and Y. And let's make Y the high byte because they rhyme. How's that? Um, pass low byte in A, high byte in Y. All right. So what we need to do then, so we already have the low byte in A, so we'll set the low byte first of the address. That's 19 right here. Current memory address, low byte. So like I said, they're backwards. Or they're not backwards, depending on how you look at it. So we'll store that. There. Well, we don't store it. We call the, call the routine to write it. So that writes A into register 19. And then we need to transfer Y to A load X with 18, or well, let's decrement X. I think that might be a one cycle faster. Jump to subroutine, write ADR, and return. So that will set up, you know, that will set the RAM pointer to whatever we pass in A and Y. And let's come down here. Let's make this an increment X. I don't need to. Okay. All right, so that will set the pointer. We're going to end up with lots of small, you know, routines like this. Although, as you can see, they all, you know, they all end up calling read ADR or write ADR. And, you know, that's going to get called over. You know, those are going to get called over and over. But anyway, let's print a character. Now this is just going to print it where the RAM pointer happens to be pointing. And in fact, let's not call it print 80 character because you can use this. You don't just use this to print characters on the screen. You also use this to print into other areas of the, the VDC's RAM, which you could be printing attributes for characters like colors. You could be printing into its character definitions to, de to define your own characters, which is definitely something we'll do. So 
let's call it print 80 byte um, and for this one we're going to pass the byte in A will print to current RAM pointer. So for this then, we just need to load X with 31, that's the, the data register. If we flip over here, the data register right there, memory read write. And the byte we want to print is already in A, so we just jump to write ADR. All right. That's all we need to do to print a byte now. Now, let's repeat 80 byte. This is a nice feature that the um, number of times in A. This is a nice feature that the, the 80 column chip has in that you can have it repeat the last thing that it printed and it will automatically increment the pointer, the RAM pointer, through RAM and just print more of it. You know, just, just repeat it as many times as you tell it. and that makes it quite a bit faster to say fill the screen or something like that because it doesn't have to wait on um, you to say okay store it here, store it here, store it here, store it here. You can just say repeat it and it just does it. Um, and so to do that we load X with 30 because that is the number of bytes for block write or copy and by block I, I would call it fill. Um, but anyway, that's the one that you tell it how many times you want to repeat it. And we already have the number of times in A, so we can just jump to A and return. Now, there's one issue with this, and that is there's a bit that determines whether when you do this, whether 30 tells it the number of bytes to repeat or the number of bytes to copy from some location because it also has the ability to do a block copy. Um, and if you do a block copy, what it does then is it copies however many, however many bytes you put in A from this source address at 32 and, you know, in registers 32 and 33, copies X number of bytes or A number of bytes to the current memory address. And so that's not what we want if we're repeating. Um, so what we have to do then to control that there's a let's see I think it's yeah it's 24 let's check the other book to be sure yes in register 24 bit 7 is the copy bit so if you clear that bit then it just does a fill it just does a repeat if that bit is set then it does a copy. So we want to clear that bit before we do this or otherwise we don't know if it's going to be doing, you know, we might have just done a copy and now we want to do a fill and so we need to make sure we clear this bit. Alright, so we want to clear bit 7 so this is going to be, this is going to look just like the init thing we did before. We need to load X with that register 24. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, read ADR. That's going to get the value of that register in A. And then to clear that bit, we'll end it with 7F and store it back by calling write to ADR. All right, now we have a problem. We've clobbered A, so A no longer has our number of times. So what we need to do to fix that is push A on the stack before we do that, pull A back off the stack here and then we can write our number of times into this register 30. All right, so now we have a repeat function, or routine. Um, we probably want a routine that we can say print a character at this X and Y coordinates, because I mean this is all fine, but we don't want to have to we don't want our main program to have to figure out all the time, okay, where in memory do we need to put this character so that it appears on the screen. So, so let's do a print ADXY routine and let's have it the way 
this comment sometimes is weird. Um, print a character at xy coordinates. All right. This one's going to get a little more complicated than the others. They've all been really simple so far. And let's print it in a at x at y. Okay. Makes it clear that we're passing these values in in those registers. So we need to figure out then where in the screen memory this is going to go. Well, y is the line, x is the, the distance across in the line. So we need to multiply y by 80, add x to it, and add that to our VDC80 RAM here that we saved when we called the init, you know, when we called the init 80 thing, init 80 text. Um, all right. So we're going to need a couple of locations. Let's just use let's use zero page um, locations. Something didn't look right. Okay, does that look right? Yeah. And it equals sign. All right. Okay, so that gives us something still doesn't look right there, but I guess it is. I guess it's just not highlighting the same way. Anyway. So, let's think about how to do this. How do you multiply y by 80? Well, we don't want to we don't want to write an actual multiplication. I mean, we don't want an actual multiplication routine for this. We can do it simpler than that. Um, first of all, we'll store y in low 80. Okay. Then if we, let's see, 80 is 16 times 5. Okay, You can do 16 easily by rotating something four times to the left. Um, then to multiply it by 5, Well, we'll have to multiply by five first. We can't, yeah. Um, to multiply something by five, you can multiply it by four and then add it once. So we can multiply it by four by shifting it twice to the left and then add it to itself again. All right, so let's do that. Let's, or we don't want to rotate it, we want to shift it. So shift it left and shift it left again. Now we multiplied it by 4. Okay, now we need to add y to that value. And to do that, we're going to have to do it in the accumulator because that's the only place you can add with. So let's push the accumulator because we're going to need that back later. And then transfer y to a. Let's see, why is, yeah, why can't get out of that byte yet? So that's not a problem. Um, but let's, uh, 
Let's do this. Let's load A with zero. It's not a zero. Into high 80. I just want to make sure that's ready when we need to rotate it. The most Y it can be is 25. That's We've only got 25 lines on the screen, so if we shift that four times, that's 100. It's still going to be in low 80. We don't have to worry about it rotating into high 80 yet. Um, then we transfer Y to A, clear the carry, add with carry low 80. Now we should have five times the original value of Y in A. And so we can store that back into low 80. Okay, 5 times 25 is still, that's still fine. It's still going to fit. All right. So now we have times 5. And so now we need to multiply that by 16 by rotating it four times. All right. So, um... I guess we can use Y as a loop we'll rotate or no, we don't want to rotate I keep saying that we're, we're really shifting because we don't want to pull in a carry if there's a carry there um, let's see yeah so we want to Shift right, low 80, but then rotate right. So I'm, I'm getting these backwards. We want to shift left. Arithmetic shift left, not right. The L on the front of LSR is is logical shift right. So we don't want that. I was thinking L for left, but it's I got it backwards. So arithmetic shift left. We want to, we're shifting all these left because we're multiplying. And so then rotate left, high 80, decrement y, branch if not equal, back up to here, which will be here. So that's going to do it on 4, on 3, on 2, and on 1. Then it should fall through. So now we've multiplied it by... Now we need to add VDC80 RAM to that okay. because our RAM might not, you know, our screen RAM might not start at zero zero, and so we need to add to that. So to do that, let's see, we still we still haven't. To, oh, sorry, we still have to add X to it before we do that. So now let's see, transfer X to A. Clear the carry, add with carry, um, low 80, branch if carry clear ahead, otherwise increment high 80, and then there's where our plus goes. Um, okay, and so that gets us then to here. Now we just need to add VDC80 RAM to that. Um, okay, and so then we'll load A with, let's see. That's going to be the low byte. We've got to clear the carry again, add with carry from low 80, store it back, 
and then branch of carry or no no we just got to add so then load a from EDC 80 RAM plus one add with carry high 80 and store that back into high 80 all right now I just had a thought I think instead of calling this routine print 80 XY we'll call it position 80 XY because I don't necessarily want to have to call this every time we print a character just when we want to position the screen and then you know once the screen is positioned then we may want to um, we don't need to push A here because we don't we're not passing A to this we're just passing the X and Y coordinates alright so that should position or no we still have to write that to the, to the thing we still have to write that to the chip but now we've got an offset start of the screen RAM So now we can load X with um, 18, which is our high byte of the, let's see, back to the other book, which is the high byte of our current memory address, which is basically our pointer into that, into that RAM. Load A with high 80, right 80R increment X, load A with low 80, right 80R. All right. That's quite a bit of stuff to say there's no mistakes in there, but uh, I suppose we'll find them when we get to them. So that positions it. What if we want to print a character? We already have a routine to just print a byte, right, at a location. And so if we have a routine position it and then print it, we should be ready. So let's do that. Print 80 character. And then it'll do what we were what we originally intended that one to do. Let's see. Print a character in A at XY coordinates. So this one needs to then we have to push A again because it's going to get clobbered in this position 80. And then jump to position 80 XY. Pull A back and then jump to, what did we call this other one? Print 80 byte. So once we've positioned the pointer into screen memory wherever we want it, then we can print the character to it. Okay. That's a bunch of stuff. All right, I've been going for a half an hour here, so we got a bunch of stuff there. Let's go to a test file here that I just created, so we have something to work with. And let's let's source. Uh, what do we call that one? VDC eighty lib. I have to put something after that? Feels like I do. Nope. Alright. Alright, so that'll give us our routines that we just wrote. So, let's init init 80. Is that what we called it? init 80 text. That's right. We want to init 80, the 80 column screen for text. That's uh, 
that's fine. And then let's say we want to print a character just uh, in the middle of the screen, I suppose. Load A was zero. Um, or well, let's let's make it a, let's make it a one. That should be an A. Should be a capital A. Let's load X with. Um, let's put it about in the middle of the screen. Load X with 40. Load Y with uh, 12. These are all decimal numbers. I'm not uh, trying to do hex this early in the morning, or I guess. Um, and jump to. Print 80 character. Return. Or let's just break there. Okay, so that should do that. That should just print a character in the middle of the screen. Um, I'm gonna go here. Let's kind of let's clear the screen. We're gonna write a screen clear routine too, but I wanna let's test what we got so far. Um, yeah, because I figured it'd probably be a mistake or two just in um, just in the code. So line five, there's the garbage data. It says because I ne probably because I never closed this zone. Maybe no, I did, and I closed that zone. Something didn't. Something doesn't look right about this one, and I don't know what it is. It's, uh, It's not. I'm not seeing there's a problem there, and I can't see it. Garbage data at end of statement, line five. That's this line. Was it just because there were spaces there or a tab? No. And then line 101 found a bracket instead of end of file. What the heck? <clears throat> Unless I have to know, I have exactly two opening brackets and two closing brackets. I mean, these are indented. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I have to be. Those have to be indented, do they? Well, let's indent them. I don't like the way they look as well, but uh, if that's how it has to be, I'm not convinced. No. What in the world? There's just something I'm not seeing. Maybe I can't name a zone after the file. around the zone names. I thought you did put quotes around the zone names. Good grief. Alright. Let's see if I can put it here because I just like it there better. data at end of statement. Line 121. Alright, what doesn't it like about this? I 
course I'm using the byte command wrong. Or no, I, I'm using my label wrong, that's it. That's what I want. Uh, okay, that's what it wants to put it. I'll let it put it there. Okay. So, let's see, where's my... I guess I killed my monitor. I guess so. I guess that's when I was resetting everything before I started the video. 6510. All right, load test. It's kind of because yeah, I gotta go to the directory. All right, so we've got our code here. It jumps right away to 1377, which must be the init routine, and then it does the stuff. So let's do it. All right, it's stuck an A there on the screen, but it didn't put it quite where I expected it to. It put it over to the left like it didn't add the X coordinate. All right, so let's have a look at that. It looks like it did the Y part right, but it didn't do the X part here, right here. We transferred X to A. Did X get clobbered before that point anywhere? It doesn't appear to have. So we transfer X to A. Add it. Oh, I never stored it back. There. That's the problem. I added X to it, but I never stored it back into low 80. All right, that should fix that. All right, it stuck the A out there in the middle of the screen, just like we wanted. Well, that's not bad. A half hour's worth of code that only had a couple of little mistakes. Nothing that took too long to find. All right, let's do a clear screen routine. And let's call this Clear80 Text because Clear80 Graphics will be different. Um, so this just needs to print spaces to all um, screen RAM. That's what it needs to do. Alright, and once again, we our screen RAM may start at variable locations, so we need to start with the location it actually starts at, which we have already you know, once we init, we've stored that into VDC80 RAM down here. So we need to put, put the pointer at where VDC80 RAM is pointing. So, let's see, so we'll load X. Or let's load A with VDC80 RAM, first of all. And that's going to be the low, the low byte of it. I may end up regretting doing it in that order, but... I'm going to stick with it for now. Load X with register 19 because that is the current, that is the low byte of the current memory address. So this is our pointer into memory that we're adjusting. And jump subroutine. Um, I haven't used it in a while because we've been using these other routines. And then decrement X, load A from VDC80 RAM plus 1, get the high byte. And right to that. All right, so that's gonna that's gonna put our pointer move screen RAM pointer to zero zero on the screen. That's gonna move it to the you know the top left location. Now we want to print two thousand spaces, okay? but we don't have to actually write a loop that runs two thousand times because of the VDC's um, ability to fill. And so what we want to do, and actually, you know, I didn't even need to, I could just use position, we already have this position 80 routine, I didn't even need to, well, that does take more trouble. If we're moving to, to zero, 0, this is actually faster than actually calculating all that business. Um, in fact, let's, let's, let's make this a routine. Let's call this um, move 80 text 
because this might be something you need to do quite a bit. Move 80 text 00. zero. Maybe, you know, maybe not. Maybe we won't use it much. We'll just take it out. But um, And so then we don't need this here. We'll just call that. I mean, you don't want to have tons of tiny routines all calling each other because there is a little bit of overhead in that. Every time you every time you do a jump subroutine, the processor pushes the current location on the stack and transfers, you know, over there and then you hit a return. So, you know, there's like six, seven, eight cycles there that that you wouldn't have to have, but I think we'll I think we can live with that. If we that's the thing, if we use move eighty text zero zero more often, now if we only use it this one time, it wouldn't make sense to split it off. We just we just copy these lines right here and put them right there, and you know, but we'll leave that for later refactoring. All right, um, so once we've moved it there, then we want to print a space. Now the space is uh, well, that's actually a good question. I'm not sure. Well, the worm program knows because we used it there. Space is 20. Okay, let's just steal that. All right. So we want to load A with the space. We want to load X. Well, let's see. Then we just want to call print 80 character. We've already positioned it. Or no, we don't. We've already positioned it, so we don't need to call that. We just want to call print 80 byte. Alright, so now we've printed it once. Now we want to print it another 1999 times. So now we want to call repeat 80 byte with the number of times in A. So let's load A with 199, or no, let's load A with 249. We could go as high as 255, but I think it'll make more sense to do it this way. And, th and this is something I don't actually, and then re repeat 80. So what do we call that? Repeat 80 byte, okay. All right, now we've printed 250 spaces. Now the thing I don't know for sure is if now we print another, you know, if we if we call repeat 80 byte again, um, I think it just goes ahead and does another however many you send to it, but I'm not absolutely positively sure about that. So um, let's see, repeat 80 byte doesn't touch the Y register, I assume. No. So we can use Y for a loop. Losing track of where I am here. So we need to do it seven more times. But first, well, first we need to load A with 250 because this time we haven't already printed one. Load Y with seven for our loop. Jump subroutine. Decrement Y. Branch if not equal up to here, which will be here and then return. Okay. All right, so that should clear the screen. And let's see which which routine has wait for key in it. No, oh, that's actually in the game of life. I I might want to split that off into a into a library file. I guess when I was writing that I wasn't really trying to be that organized. Um, let's wait for a key to be pressed. I just want to stick this in my program so that it doesn't break out and move the screen until we're ready. Um, so let's go test. I just said, 
because if it hits this break or if it hits a return, whatever, then the, the system goes ahead and prints some stuff on the screen, which shifts everything that we just printed on the screen. It's a little bit hard to tell what's going on. Um, so we'll just stick in a wait for key there so that I can press a key before it actually ends. Um, so clear 80 text. Now to test this, I'm going to actually, you know what, instead of calling it clear 80 text, let's call it fill 80 text. Fill screen RAM with character in A. All right. Then we don't need this because the character is already in A. All right. And then we can have clear 80 text, which loads A with space and calls fill 80 text. Because there may be times we want to fill it with something else. That's basically what we're getting at there. All right. So let's come back here then. After we init 80 text, let's jump to clear 80 text. So that should clear the screen. Then let's print a character on the screen. Then let's jump to wait for key. Then let's load A with um, 2. That should be a B. And jump to jump to subroutine fill 80 text. And then wait for key. So this should clear the screen, put an A in the center of it like we did before, wait for a key, and then fill the screen with B's, and then wait for a key. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay, it filled it with zeros, I think. So we'll have to figure out why that is. And it only waited for one key, or oh, that's because it I can't press it that fast that it doesn't get more than one. That's the reason for that. Um, I don't see an A in the There might be an A in the middle of that somewhere, but I don't see it. All right, so I'm pretty sure the at sign is zero. So we're not printing the value in A for some reason. Probably I'm probably clobbering it here. Yeah, I'm clobbering it right here. When I call move 80 text, I can't I gotta save A on the stack before I do that. And then get it back. Okay. Now I could put that in here, but you kind of just you have to assume that when you call routines they might clobber your registers so it's best to protect your your values when you need to protect them and not worry about it otherwise all right I think that'll fix that all right cleared it printed the A and filled it with B's and then the, the second wait for key went too fast um, okay so that's good. We can fill the screen. We can clear the screen. We can print to a location on the screen. Um, what else might we want to do? Um, Well, um, we might want to be able to print a, a string, you know, a string of text. Print 80 string. All right, now, there's a few different ways you can go about this. Um, 
basically you have to have some way for your routine to know where the string is. So that's got to be passed in either through the registers or like through you know zero page locations or something. Um, Well, we've got three registers and there's three, basically three pieces of information or, or two depending on how you look at it. Um, print string at location stay consistent. We said before Y would be the high byte and any addresses and A would be the low byte. Y will be the high byte because it rhymes. Alright, so we're going to find a string at location at that location in memory. And first byte is length. Alright, there are a couple different ways you can you can put strings in memory. One is to end them with a zero. The only problem is a zero in our system isn't a null, it's just the, the at sign. And so we don't really have a character that we want to do that with necessarily. Um, because it's always possible we could want to print whatever character we used as the end of string. And so what we'll do is we'll say the first byte in the string is the length of the string. All right. And so that means our, you know, our string can only be up to 255 bytes long, but that should be fine. Um, all right, so we're going to need to use a couple of zero page locations then. So let's um, um, we'll call them string 80. So we've got to store the low byte, which is an A, into string 80, and store the high byte into string 80 plus 1, and now we have a pointer in zero page that we can use to do our usual thing um, to go get that. So we load Y with a 0, now it's going to be pointing at the beginning of that, and so then we can load A from string 80 comma Y, so we're using our indirect indirect index thing that we haven't used in a while but um, so so a now has the length and so we're going to want to transfer that let's see once we start printing this on the screen we're going to be using a and x because all of our ad column routines use a and x and so we're going to want to loop on y i suppose um, so let's transfer A to Y. So our length is in Y now. Yeah, we can't do that because we've got to use Y as our uh, got to use Y as our um, indexer here. That's going to continue. So we got to set up another address. count 80. Pretty sure FA is, is free. A, B, C, D, and E are the free ones, I think. Yeah. It's got something in it right now, but uh, I don't think it has to. Um... Really, even like low 80 and high 80 wouldn't have to be in zero page. I mean, actually, there, there's plenty of zero page locations. I don't need to be that stingy with them for this, but um, I'm just thinking about in the future, not wanting to have collisions with other code that's calling this, but um, I guess we'll get to that when we get to it. 
So we need to store the A into count 80. And then we'll use that for our counter <clears throat> as we print the string. All right, so then we can increment Y. Let's see. For each character then, that in for each character in count 80, or for each for each one of count 80, we want to increment Y, load A from that location, Make, just to make sure this is clear. Now this will print to wherever the, the pointer happens to be at the time. So if we, if we want to print to a particular location, we'll have to set that location first. But anyway, let's get this done. So load A from string ID comma Y again, and then call whatever we called it, print 80 character. Now we don't want to print 80 character because this will already be positioned. We don't want to have to keep sending new coordinates every time. So this will be print 80 byte. Those names might have to be changed. Those might get confusing. And then decrement count 80, branch if not equal, back up to here, which will be here. And then return. Okay. So, so that's print 80 string. this out, this out. Let's put a string down here. Um, yeah, you can have messages with the screen and that'll give that'll give it screen codes. So we don't have to figure out what all the screen codes are and put them in a hex. We can just let the assembler do that. So now we don't want to put, let's see. I guess I can put a now the length of that is going to be five, it's going to be twelve. Let's see if it likes that. I don't know if it's going to like that. I don't know if it'll be happy with that as a screen character, but we'll see. All right, so to do that then, we would load A with the low byte of string, which you do in the assembler. Let's see, how do you do that in the assembler? I think like this. Is that the low byte or the high byte? And load Y with the low byte, or the load Y with the high byte. I probably have those backwards. I got in the habit of I've, I've never gotten the habit of using these things because these are assembler things, and I was usually just working in the monitor. So let us try it. If it's backwards, it won't work. Um, okay. Okay, put an A in the center. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Definitely didn't work. Wherever it got that information, I don't know, but let's try it the other way around. Did the same thing. That's weird prints a bunch of zeros and then hmm interesting just in case string is like a special name or something let's do this built it the last time actually. Ah, I hadn't rebuilt it the last time. So as you can see there when it printed the when it printed the string, it just 
continued from the last place you know we had positioned the, the cursor. I don't want to call it the cursor because the cursor is actually a separate thing. You can see it down here. You can actually move the cursor around completely separate from that from that pointer in the RAM. Um, but the, the pointer anyway, you know, we, we printed an A right here, and so the pointer was sitting on the next location. It automatically increments it every time you print something, and so now we can, we can print it. Uh, we can print a message on the screen. Um, coming back to here, let's say we wanted to loop. Well, no, we don't need to do that, but let's say we want to before we do this, let's position it back at the top of the screen um, or somewhere different. Um, let's see, what's our oh, wrong file? Position ADXY, let's position it somewhere different. Um, or load X with let's say 20, load Y with, let's say 20 also, and EDXY, all right. So that'll print it starting at 2020 on the screen. There, so. 20, 20 spaces over, 20 lines down is where it printed at that time. All right, well, we've been added about an hour here. We've got our basic routines now for the 80 column screen. Now what we'll need to do is start wrapping those in something actually useful. Um, we'll need to work on printing a color um, along with the, you know, printing an attribute byte along with the character byte. Um, we might want to have a routine that does both where we can pass it a character and an attribute and say print this you know somewhere um, we're going to want we're also going to want to do a, a series of graphics routines to handle the graphics side of this so maybe that'll be the uh, task for next time but anyway we'll continue on with this until we have a full suite of routines for the 80 column screen that we can use to do whatever we want our programs to do and see how hard we can push it. So that's it for this time and thank you for watching.